Hello, my name is Brandon Weekly, and today we're going to be covering how to configure Secure Boot on the CEC 173X Trust Shield using our Trust Platform Design Suite software. To begin setting up Secure Boot or any other feature of the CEC 173X, there are a few things you're going to need. First off, on the hardware side, you're going to need a laptop or a PC that's running either a Windows or a Linux operating system. Next, you'll need the CEC 1736 development board. This can be purchased from the microchip website. There are certain elements of the CEC 173X chips that are one-time programmable. So this development board comes equipped with a socket that allows you to swap out chips so that you can test multiple OTP configurations. On the software side, you will need the Trust Platform Design Suite. This is the main UI that we'll use to program the part. And it shares some dependencies with MPLAB, so you will also need the latest version of the MPLAB X integrated development environment. Now, Secure Boot has become a fairly ubiquitous security feature that's seen several methods of implementation depending on the platform. So before we jump into the configurator, let's take a look at how it is that we implement Secure Boot using the CEC 173X Trust Shield. Now, these parts are agnostic to the application processor that you're running. You simply have to be running code that is housed in an external spy flash. So whether it be your boot firmware, your, your BIOS code, whatever it is that we want to secure, it needs to be in a flash device that is external to the application processor. Now, the threat vector that we're addressing is somebody hijacking your spy bus and injecting malicious code into your application processor. If it's an IoT device, they may be doing this remotely, they may be doing it in person, but your application processor isn't going to be able to tell the difference between code it should be running and shouldn't be running. So Secure Boot allows us to establish this framework of authorizing code before it runs on the application processor. So to do this, we put our trust shield in between the application processor and the spy flash. And there are a couple of lines or data buses that we need to account for to explain how this works. The first is we have a spy line that goes from the spy flash into the trust shield. We have an I squared C line that goes from the trust shield into the application processor. We're not using it for the purposes of secure boot, but this does have use in other security features that trust shield offers. We have a reset line that allows us to hold our application processor in reset while we're running our security check so that it can't do anything until we're sure that the code that we're trying to run is safe. And then we have the spy line that allows us to actually run the code that we get from the external spy flash once our, bo our boot is actually secure. So there are a couple of important blocks inside of the trust shield that, that help us understand how it is that secure boot runs. In the spy flash itself, there, we're going to be holding a couple of images that are used to authenticate the code that we're going to try to run. We'll try to establish a digital signature using asymmetric encryption with the first code image. And if we're able to see that this image has been signed using the proper private key, then we will go ahead and allow the code to run. If that image for whatever reason doesn't pass, then we do have a second image that we can try. So we can fall back to, uh, to a golden image just in case the first one is corrupted or if the spy device is broken. You do have the option to store these images on separate spy devices, so, uh, but you can also store them on the same one. For simplicity's sake, we have them on the same one in this diagram. And then again, once we have authenticated one of these images, we have our, our BIOS code in this instance or in this example that, uh, that we'll be running. Inside the Trust Shield itself, we have our ROM, our boot ROM. This is where we store our, the boot code. Uh, it has the preferences of how we're going to run Secure Boot. Next is the OTP or one-time programmable block. This is where we store our keys uh, as well as several, several other security preferences. And as the name suggests, it is one-time programmable. This is why it's important that the development board has a socket on it so that uh, if you want to try different OTP configurations, you can swap out the chips. But once this is programmed and provisioned, it can't be overwritten to the keys inside of it are set in stone. For the purposes of Secure Boot, this is where we have our authority public key. This is what we use to uh, run the function that will allow us to know whether or not the private key used to sign the code is legitimate. Next is our internal uh, flash device to the CEC 173X. 
for the purposes of secure boot, we can house a golden image in here if for whatever reason the CEC tag zero and one fail, we can hold an older version of, uh, uh, of the firmware that we still have authorized that can then boot up from inside of the trust shield itself if we're not able to boot from anything in the, uh, in the spy flash and we must boot. Lastly, we have our SRAM block and it serves several purposes. Uh, we'll get into how it factors into Secure Boot in a moment. But the very first step is that we push that, uh, that reset line. We flip that on so that the application processor isn't allowed to do anything. Once we've done that, we take our CEC image zero and we load it into the SRAM of the CEC 17.3X. From here, we're going to try to establish this digital signature with the authority public key that's inside of the OTP. If we're able to do this successfully, then we give it the go ahead, we release the reset pin on the application processor and we allow the code to be run on the, uh, through the spy bus, through the uh, trust shield from the, uh, the external spy flash into the application processor and we can actually execute our code. This is, despite how many steps it may seem to have, this is a very fast process. It's typically on the order of hundreds of milliseconds in additional boot time, but it does allow you to make sure that the code that we're running is signed and that we're not running something that comes from a malicious actor. Again, to reiterate, we do have our CEC image one, just in case uh, uh, tag zero or image zero fails. And then we have a gold image that lives inside of the internal spy flash of the CEC 17.3X that we can use if needed. Now that we understand how Secure Boot works with our CEC 17.3x, we'll be able to use Trust Platform Design Suite here to configure the feature. Now as a reminder, you'll need to have MPLABX installed and updated for this configurator to work properly. Now to get started, we'll open TPDS and navigate to our Configurators tab here. In the center, we'll find our Trust Flex card and we'll click on the CEC 17.3x Trust Flex Configurator. Up in the top left, we'll see our available features and we'll click on Secure Boot. And here we'll be presented with the options that we have to configure Secure Boot. Here in this first section, we can point to where in our external spy flash we store our AP code images, and we can create or upload the keys that will be used to authenticate these images. In the next section for AP config and hash table information, we'll be able to point to where our tables are stored. We'll be able to create keys that will be used to authenticate them. And then we can assign individual keys to individual tables for this authentication. And here in this last section, we have several options to customize our Soteria code images. We can point to where our images are going to be stored in the internal spy flash of the CEC 17.3X. We can also create and uh, or upload keys that will be used to authenticate these images. We can point to where in the SRAM we're going to load our code images during the authentication process. And then we can also configure some things about both the internal and external spy flashes such as clock speed and drive strength. Thank you for watching this video on the implementation of Secure Boot using our CEC 17.3x Trust Shield. There will be a separate video covering how to create a provisioning package and then program it to a CEC 1736 using the development board. Also, please check out our YouTube channel for more videos covering different use cases supported by Trust Platform Design Suite.